welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करति बरी भरति संजरी हरति लीलया so far in this course we have studied the theoretical background of the process of compounding whose understanding is a prerequisite in order to understand the process of compounding of the three types of samasas which are the focus of this course namely avyayi bhav bahurihi and dvandva we said that samartha theory is the base of the process of compounding and what this entails is that two or more words which are semantically related are samarthas they are fit to be compounded two or more words juxtaposed but semantically not related are not eligible for undergoing the process of compounding this is not possible according to the theory of compounding stated in the paninian grammar and the paninian grammatical tradition we also said that this samartha theory is based on the karaka theory in general we have also studied the concept of karaka as stated in the ashtadhyayi by panini and we have also seen some examples in the previous lecture we studied some exceptions to the by default samartha theory and we studied the three examples one each for avyayi bhava bahuvrihi and dvandva we already studied this concept with respect to the tatpurusha samasa in the first course now it is time to also throw light on some more basic terms and processes related to the theory of compounding of these three types these basic terms and processes they are generic in nature they apply to compounds in general and that is the reason why they need to be revisited and they need to be highlighted when we study the three types of compounds namely avyayi bhav bahuvrihi and dvandva so in this particular lecture we deal with these two terms nitya samasa and anitya samasa or vaikalpika samasa these are two very crucial technical terms used by the paninian grammatical tradition also based on the mention of the word nitya or nityam in the grammar of panini so what is nitya samasa how is it defined how is it explained 
it is explained in two manners. One is avigraha, that is, which cannot be dissolved. And the second one is asvapada vigraha, which cannot be dissolved with the same constituents visible in the final output of the compound. You need to take help of additional members which are not visible in the final output of the compound. That is the idea of asvapada vigraha. A vigraha means which cannot be dissolved. What it implies is that the meaning denoted by the samasa is not denoted by the constituents individually and independently alone. There is something additional which is denoted only when the process of compounding happens. And we shall study this little bit more. Also, a svapada vigraha has got a svapada and vigraha as, as the constituents. Svapada refers to the constituents of the samasa. So when the vigraha does not involve only the svapadas, it is called asvapada vigraha. When it involves more than svapadas, when it needs additional padas which are not the svapadas, which are not the constituents and then such a compound is called Nitya Samasa of a Svapada Vigraha type. Let us study the Nitya Samasa which is a Vigraha type. A Vigraha is explained as a Samasa which cannot be dissolved. What it means is that the meaning that is denoted only by the samasa and the underlying structure does not denote that meaning which is denoted by the samasa. Meaning that, that meaning is additional to the meaning of the constituents. So even though such a samasa is generated with the help of the constituents, there comes something additional, some additional meaning which gen gets generated only during the process of compounding and therefore that meaning generated by the output cannot be explicitly stated by the constituents of the samasa. And such a samasa is called a vigraha. This is very, very exceptional. And the examples of the Nitya Samasa of Avigraha type are the following. Names like Unmatta Gangam, Lohita Gangam and Vrukodaraha Damodaraha. These are the examples of the Nitya Samasa which is Avigraha type. We can show the generation of these compounds through its constituents. However, when the compound gets generated, it denotes a particular meaning which is not available to us when we dissolve this particular compound. And second, meanings like censure which are denoted by indirect references, kundo daraha, Gato Daraha, etc. What it means is having a belly like a pitcher and in other words pot bellied. Now the examples mentioned on the first bullet are names of places, Desha, Udmatta Gangam Deshaha, Lohita Gangam Deshaha, as well as men. Vrukodara is the name of Bhima and second denotes censure by saying that the belly is like a pitcher, the obesity is censured over here 
and this censure is denoted only by a samasa. If this word is dissolved, then the censure is lost. The vigraha or the resolution does not have the capacity to denote the censure. Censure is denoted only when the compound takes place and that is why these are the examples of avigraha type nitya samasa. All these are the examples of bahuvrihi samasa. Unmatta gangam and lohita gangam, although semantically are bahuvrihis, they are however peculiarly classified under the category of avyayi bhava for some specific purpose that we shall study later on. Now let us study the Nitya Samasa which is of the second type namely Asvapada Vigraha. Asvapada Vigraha means that a Samasa which cannot be dissolved with the same constituents visible in the final output. A Svapada Vigraha. Svapada are the constituent padas and vigraha is the dissolution. Generally, the vigraha includes only the svapadas, but these are the samasas which do not include only the svapadas, which also involves some modified words as well as some additional words. So, asvapada vigraha means the dissolution involving modified words, modified in the sense that the constituents have a particular form in the samasa and they get modified when the dissolution takes place. Similarly, when the dissolution involves additional words, that is also termed as aswapada vigraha. In a nutshell, the compound cannot be dissolved using the same constituents visible in the finally generated output form is the nature of Asvapada Vigraha Nitya Samasa. And here are the examples of Asvapada Vigraha Nitya Samasa that we studied in the first course. These are the examples of the Upapada Tatpurusha where the resolution involves modified words. So the samasa is kumbhakara and the constituents are kumbha and kara. But when this samasa gets dissolved, kara does not figure in the dissolution. Rather, karoti, which is a modified word, is part of the dissolution. So we say kumbham karoti as the vigraha of Kumbhakara. Kumbhakara is a potter, one who makes a pot. The Vigraha is Kumbha, Kumbham Karoti and the Samasa is Kumbhakara. Similarly, Grahastha which has got two constituents, Graha and Stha. Now when we dissolve this particular compound, the dissolution does not have Stha as the member of member, whereas it gets modified by the word tishthati, grahe tishthati. So grahastha means a household, namely one who resides in a house. And the resolution is not grahasya sthaha, it is grahe tishthati. Similarly, jalada which has got two constituents, jala and the. Jalada means a cloud, literally one who gives water, jalam dadati. Now, when this compound is dissolved, we don't have jalasya daha. We have jalam dadati. So, da, so the, which is the visible 
or audible unit in the samasa gets modified in dadati similarly bhupa bhavam pati bhupa bhupa is a king and the two constituents are bhu and pa so bhupa means a king literally one who protects the earth now here when we dissolve the compound we do not say bhuvaha paha we rather modify pa as pati bhuvam pati these are the examples of the upapada tatpurusha samasa as asvapada vigraha where the resolution involves modified words and we have studied these before now let us take examples where the resolution involves modified words with respect to the avyayi bhava samasa we have the samasa pratidinam every day anurupam fitting to the form and yatha shakti in accordance with the strength pratidinam can not be dissolved as prati and dinam this is not possible anurupam can not be dissolved as anu and rupam similarly yatha shakti cannot be dissolved as yatha and shakti so in the samasa pratidina prati and dina are the constituents which are visible as well as audible in anurupa anu and rupa are the constituents and in yatha shakti yatha and shakti are the constituents but when you dissolve the compound you cannot use the same constituents in the dissolution that is the idea you have to use certain modified words and in this case these modified words are actually completely different than what we see in the case of the tatpurusha samasa at least there was some correlation as far as the phonetic features are concerned with the modified word and the constituent in the samasa that is not the case with the avyayi bhava samasa in the tatpurusha samasa when the samasa is grihastha stha and tishthati bhup bhuvam pati jalam dadati etc do have some correlation with the constituents however that is not the case with the avyayi bhava samasa the dissolution involves modified words so pratidinam is dissolved as dine dine anurupam is dissolved as rupasya yogyam and yatha shakti is dissolved as shaktim anatikramya so prati which is visible in the samasa form is not visible in the dissolution rather the additional dine comes in in the dissolution anu which is visible in the samasa form is not part of the dissolution rather another word yogyam comes in which modifies anu completely and yatha which is the member of the samasa which is visible is not part of the vigraha uh, rather there is another modified word anatikramya which is part of the vigraha therefore this becomes a svapada vigraha and therefore this becomes a nitya samasa the second explanation of a svapada vigraha is the dissolution which involves additional words so the members of the samasa which are visible they are in fact part of the dissolution but the dissolution is not just those constituent words but there are some more words which are added in the dissolution and here are the examples these are the examples of the bahuvrihi samasa the examples are gajanana 
Ekadanta and Lambodara. All these three are the names of Ganesha, Shri Ganesha. However, the literal meanings of these three are independent and separate. Gajanana means one who has a face of an elephant. Ekadanta means one who has one tooth. And Lambodara means one who has big belly. So the constituents of the Samasa which is visible or audible are Gaja and Anana, Eka and Danta and Lamba and Udara. Now if you dissolve this Samasa, you will need some additional words along with these two constituents. And the Vigraha of these Samasas is not done only with these two constituents. You cannot say Gajasya Ananam as the Vigraha of Gajanana. Not possible. Ekasya Dantaha or Ekaha Dantaha. This is not what is intended. Lambam Udaram. And that is not the Vigraha that is intended by the speaker. As we said earlier, Gajanana cannot be dissolved as Gajasya Ananam. Ekadanta cannot be dissolved as Ekaha Dantaha. And Lambodara cannot be dissolved as Lambam Udaram. What we mean here is that the compound is not dissolved using only the constituent members of the Samasa. Rather, we have to add some additional words. So, Gajanana is the compound output and the Vigraha is Gajasya Ananam Iva Ananam Yasya Saha. So, Iva Ananam Yasya and Saha, four words are added in the dissolution of this particular compound. Similarly, in Ekadanta, Ekaha Dantaha Yasya Saha. So, Yasya Saha are added in the dissolution of this particular compound. Similarly, Lambam Udaram Yasya Saha. So, Yasya Saha, two words are additionally attached in the Vigraha of this particular compound. And therefore, this is called a Swapada Vigraha and the Samasa is called Nitya Samasa. These additional words have a function to play. These additional words indicate that the head is outside. So they indicate the head which is outside of this compound. So Gajasya Anana Ananam Iva Ananam Yasya Saha. This indicates that in the audible compound form Gajanana, which has got two constituents, Gaja and Anana, neither of them is the head, but this Saha, which is referred to in the Vigraha or dissolution, is the head. Similarly, in Ekadanta, of which Eka and Danta are the constituents, neither of them is the head. But this Saha, which is mentioned in the dissolution, additionally, is the head. Similarly, Lambodara, which has got Lamba and Udara as the constituents, none of them is the head. And rather, Saha, which is mentioned additionally in the Vigraha, which acts as the head. So these additional words indicate the head which is outside. After having studied the Nitya Samasa examples of Bahuvrihi, let us now study the Nitya Samasa Asvapada Vigraha type examples of the Dvandva Samasa. These are the examples 
where the dissolution involves additional words. So Rama Lakshmana, Bhimarjuna, and Vaktvacham. Rama Lakshmana means Rama and Lakshmana together. Bhimarjuna means Bhima and Arjuna together. Vaktvacham means a group of speech and skin. These are peculiar meanings. These are the examples of Dvandva Samasa. Now, Rama Lakshmana cannot be dissolved as Ramaha and Lakshmanaha. This is not possible. The constituents of the compound Rama Lakshmana is Rama and Lakshmana and we cannot dissolve the compound only using these two words. Similarly, the compound Bhima Arjuna cannot be dissolved as Bhima and Arjuna. Bhima Arjuna has got two constituents, Bhima and Arjuna, and the dissolution does not involve only these two constituents. Similarly, Vaktvacha is a Samasa, and its dissolution does not necessarily only involve its constituents, namely Vak and Twach. Rather, we need to add another word to them in the dissolution. So, as far as Rama Lakshmana is concerned, we have to add the word Chaha, Cha, Ramaha, Lakshmanaha, and Cha. In Bhimarjuna, we have to add the word Cha, Bhimaha, Arjunaha, and Cha. In Vaktvacham, we have to say Vakcha Tvakcha Anayoho Samaharaha. So, Cha as well as Anayoho Samaharaha, these are the additional words that are attached in the Vigraha of these Samasa. Samasas which make them Aswapada Vigraha Samasas and Nitya Samasas. These additional words also indicate that both the words as well as the group Samahara are the head of the Samasa. After having studied the examples of Nitya Samasa, let us note down which all are the Nitya Samasas. So we have Avyayi Bhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva which are listed as Nitya Samasas and these are the three which we shall study in this particular course. However, we also have Upapada Tatpurusha, Gati Tatpurusha, Paradi Tatpurusha and Naya Tatpurusha parts of Tatpurusha Samasas which are also Nitya Samasas. We have studied these types of Tatpurusha Samasas in the first course. Now there is something to be added over here. Except Avyayi Bhava, all other types of Nitya Samasas are stated in the Adhikara Nityam, which is stated in 2.2.17. Most of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa is stated before the Adhikara Vibhasha, meaning optionally 2.1.11, and that is why the sutras stating Avyayi Bhava Samasa before this 2.1.11, they are all considered to be stating the Nitya Samasa. This is an important detail that we must keep in mind, which is related to the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. So what is an Anitya Samasa? Also described as Vaikalpika Samasa. So there is Vigraha that is possible and also Svapada Vigraha that is possible. So where dissolution is done and the dissolution denotes the same meaning 
as the samasa. This is the Vaikalpika samasa. So the same idea can be expressed using the Vigraha Vakya as well as the Sangraha samasa. And this is done with the help of the constituents visible in the final output of the compound and such a samasa is also called Anitya samasa where it involves Svapada Vigraha. So the primary idea is that meanings can be denoted by both compound as well as underlying sentence and there is no additional meaning of censure or the name which is denoted only by a compound and not its constituents. The Vaikalpika Samasa is governed by the Adhikara Vibhasha or optionally stated in the Sutra 2111 and this continues up to Nityam in 2217. So this Adhikara governs the section from 2111 up to 2216. Primarily Vibhakti Tatpurusha and Karmadharaya come under these Nitya Samasas and we have studied them in the first course in quite a lot of detail. To summarize, Nitya Samasas are peculiar types of Samasas indicating peculiar speech habits of speakers of the language Sanskrit. The Nitya Samasas do have the underlying constituent sentence structure that is not denied but the process of compounding is used by the speakers for specific additional meaning elements to be denoted by the compounds alone and not by the ordinary sentence corresponding with the Samasa. The by default procedure to derive such Nitya Samasas remains the same. The sentence structure is the input and the Samasa is the output which is a nominal root or the Pratipadika. This Samasa is always contrasted or compared with or explained by the underlying sentence structure and this is what shows that the by default procedure remains the same. That is what its base is, the Arthakasha. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.